I had just brought home three skeins of yarn in festive shades of evergreen and cranberry and cream, and with visions of handmade holiday gifts dancing in my head, I thought that I would be knitting in Advent, in between baking cookies and trimming the tree and doing a little pastoral care. It was six weeks before Christmas. I had plenty of time. Plenty of time if one day really were like a thousand years, as it is for God, according to the second letter of Peter. Perhaps then, if I had a thousand years, I could finish even one cotton dishcloth as a gift in candy cane stripes or one warm hat topped with a pom-pom like a snowball. The truth is, though, there are other things that need doing while those cookies bake. And before the tree can be trimmed, the lights need to be untangled and tested, everyone. And along with pastoral care, there are homilies to preach and classes to teach, and the house isn't ready for visitors. There aren't enough hours, let alone days, to do it all. And my gift knitting becomes just one more chore, one more thing that has to get done when there's not enough time to do it. While you are waiting, beloved, Peter goes on to say in his letter, while you are waiting, strive to be found at peace. Another knitter I know decided about six weeks before Christmas that she would not be making any gifts out of yarn this year. Knitting is a passion, a pastime, a practice that for some is the beginning of prayer, of settling into a rhythm of stitching and breathing and making spaces between loops and weaving together worry with hope, making something gathered and full and strong and warm out of something that started out just as a single strand. In the midst of all the other demands of this or any other season, knitting is, for her, a necessary place of peace. My knitting friend did not want to be found at midnight on Christmas Eve weeping over the last few rows of a pair of mittens that still has to be wrapped and tagged and given. She wanted to be found at peace throughout this season of so much preparation, so much expectation, so much production. I don't know whether my friend is a person of faith or not, but her choice about her knitting spoke deeply to my spirit that longs to observe Advent well, but that easily gets tangled up in its many tasks. Even the things that hold meaning for me, like knitting or baking my mom's Christmas cookies, or attending a service of lessons and carols, or reading the scriptures chosen for Advent Sundays, can become just more things I have to do, sources of pressure rather than peace, and plenty of time becomes nowhere near enough. Peter's letters were written to a church waiting for Christ to come, as we are now, Whether the days stretch on indefinitely or fly swiftly by, we are called to fill the time meaningfully. We cannot make one day into a thousand years as much as we think that might help us. But we can expand the moments we do have, so that as often as we are able, we can remember that the story being told in Advent is one of a thousand years, of two thousand years and more, a story that stretches from in the beginning to everlasting, a story in which God at once patiently and passionately is saving God's people. There is enough to be anxious about in this world, in our communities, in our daily rounds, goodness knows we need our Messiah to come. There is enough to do. Goodness knows the list is long of the ways in which both the world and our faith make demands of us. But there is also enough time.
time. For the coming of Christ does not depend on how many cookies we bake, how many parties we attend, how many holiday gifts we knit. May we strive this Advent to be found at peace, Which is to say, may we expand as many moments as we can, not to do more, but to remember more in the midst of what we are doing, in the midst of the hopes and fears of all the years and of each and every day, that our Savior who is coming has already come and is always and even now here 